Proudly, we hail. American stage begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail another airman of the United States Air Force. Titled Breakaway. This is the story of one of the airmen who fly in our Strategic Air Command tanker planes and how he found the answers to two very important questions. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, here's something we want every veteran to know about. The United States Air Force needs men who are skilled in so called critical jobs, jobs that keep America's air defense strong. And for that reason, New opportunities, new benefits are now available to veterans who re-enlist in the Air Force. A wider range of skills is now accepted, with a choice of U.S. and overseas assignments. What's more, qualified men can be guaranteed technical training in a critical skill. On the basis of aptitude testing, this guarantee can be made even before you enlist. The United States Air Force has another important advantage for you, too. A paid 30-day delay in reporting if requested and a more favorable conversion list for all veterans, especially men with technical experience and know-how. There's also a new grade policy in effect, plus new rules of eligibility. So if you're a veteran of any service, contact your nearest Air Force recruiter now. Remember, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, Breakaway. I've had a lot of things happen to me in my life, the same as everybody else. But the biggest of them all happened since I've been in the Air Force. It began about five months ago in the most unlikely place. Three strikes in a row. Some going, Don. Yeah, I was pretty lucky that evening. But we were up against the toughest competition in our wing bowling league, a ground crew from a B-47 squadron. And we had to be lucky if we wanted to win. But when we did, just barely, for the first time in weeks. Oh, better luck next time, fellas. You didn't do too bad, though, for a hangar bird. Okay, we let you off easy, boy. We'll be ready, don't worry. You better practice a little, then. Boy, you really came through for us tonight, Don. I hope I can keep it up, Ed. Oh, you will. Hey, let me see that score sheet. Yeah, here it is. Boy, that looks nice, doesn't it? Excuse me, please. Yeah, look, I made two spares here. Now, if I could have just given that one ball a little more spin. Would you please let me yeah, see, Yeah, I remember that one. Just a shade of a twist to the left, you know, might have done it. To the left? I'd like to get yeah, a ball yeah, to the from left. the rack if you... Oh, I'd say to the right. No, no, to the left. Don't you remember the, the number... Oh, 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 my toe. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Does it, does it hurt much? Hurt? You hear that, Ed? She drops a ten-pin ball right smack dab on my big toe and she asks me if it hurts. Oh. No, no, it, it just sort of tickles. Well, you have my sympathy, I'm sure, but... I've been asking you for the last five minutes to kindly move out of the way so I could get a ball from the rack. But you were making so much noise, presumably you didn't hear me, so I had to reach around you to get it, and naturally it slipped. Naturally. Ed, help me over to the bench, will you? Oh, sure, no, sure. Here. How's that? That's better. All right, so I wonder if I can still walk. And take a shoe off? No, no. I'm beginning to feel better now. I mean, who is that waff? You ever see her before? No. I didn't really get a good look at her. Say that again. Ooh. Pretty sharp, huh? Hey, you know something? No, what? I feel no pain no more. And you know something else? For safety's sake, she better learn how to hold the ball, and I think I'm the one to teach her. Oh, you better not, Don. You might end up with your other toe out of joint. We need you for our next match. Oh, don't worry, Ed. I'll do all right. I hope. See you later at the barracks. Okay. If you come back in a cast, don't say I didn't warn you. Excuse me? Yes? Yeah. I forgive you. I'm relieved. I thought you would be. And to show you I have no hard feelings, I've decided to help you learn how to hold and bowl a ball properly. Mighty decent of you, I'm sure. It's nothing. No kidding. You don't mind, do you? Well, no. 
Fine. Maybe introductions are in order. I'm Staff Sergeant Don Bell, 5203rd Air Refueling Squadron. Airman First Class Carol Jennings. Glad to meet you. So am I. Under these conditions. Why, what do you do, Carol? I'm a control tower operator. Oh, then you must have brought us in many times. Oh, you're a flyer? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm the only guy in the Air Force who lies down on his job. Oh, how do you mean? I'm a boom operator on a KC-97G tanker plane. That must be a fascinating job. It sure is. But say, I better get started before they close the place here. Now, let's go into the nomenclature of the ball, bowling M1. I tried my best to teach her the finer points of bowling, but I didn't get much beyond showing her how to hold the ball. She was a tiny girl, came just to my shoulders, and every time I started to instruct her, I got a whiff of some kind of perfume she must have had on, and I couldn't concentrate. As a matter of fact, I was still somewhat in a fog after I left her that evening. The following morning, we took off on a training flight. So you didn't teach her much about bowling, and you had to tell me. I just didn't get around to it, Ed, that's all. We had other things to talk about. Mm, Such as? You wouldn't understand. You'd be surprised at what I can understand. And from what I hear... Aircraft commander to boom operator. Prepare for contact. Save it, Ed. Aircraft commander to crew. During this refueling, our breakaway will be practiced. It will be simulated. From a first look see at a KC-97G tanker plane, you might think it's just a four-engine cargo plane, but it isn't. If you take a closer look at it, you'll see the bulge at the rear bottom of the ship. A plastic pod with a 12-foot-long pipe extending from the rear. The pod is the boom operator's position, and the pipe is the retractable boom through which fuel is passed to planes needing it. If you think it's a ticklish job to hook up with a receiver plane going at 240 miles per hour, you're right. There's the receiver plane, Don. Right, Ed. AC from boom operator. Have receiver in sight, approximately six miles. Switching to radio VHF. Blue Star 7, this is Red Dog 5, boom, over. Red Dog 5, this is Blue Star 7. Go ahead, boom operator. Over. Roger. Take up refueling position. Roger. My boom is trailing extended from our ship eight feet, while the pilot starts to slip his ship into position so that the end of the boom will line up with his receiver receptacle. All this under my direction. Ready for contact. Ready for contact. Forward 300 feet, Blue Star 7. Down 10 feet. When the ship is about four feet away, I extend my boom and make the final contact. Contact made. At this point, Sergeant Allen, our engineer, starts transferring the fuel. For today, we're waiting for the word that signals an emergency procedure exercise. Break away. As the word implies, the two ships have to separate as quickly as possible, thus allowing for separate control and correction of the emergency, all according to regulations. Our aircraft commander increases power and climbs on course. I actuate the emergency disconnect switch on my rotavator control stick and retract and stow the boom while the receiver pilot operates his disconnect switch, decreases power, and drops behind our ship. Very smooth, Don. Right, this makes perfect. You bet. So when's the next uh, rendezvous do? Three hours. I guess we can relax a bit. How about some lunch? That suits me. Yeah, Don, our crew sure works well together. Well, we ought to. We've been at it long enough. What did we do last year? Two million five hundred thousand gallons transferred? Yeah. So, you, you walked that flap home last night, huh? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we went back to the day room after we left you. Or after you left us. Oh, did you? Uh-huh. I knocked off Sergeant Allen four games in a row at Big Boss. Fine. Wanted to play doubles, but couldn't without you. Say, Don, this, uh, WAF chick. You're not going to get yourself all tied up with her, right? Well, who said I was? Well, nobody. Don't worry about that. You going to see her again? Yeah, yeah, tonight. Tonight? I thought we were going to go to the gym tonight. Get ready for the basketball season. We always did. Well, you better count me out tonight, then. Yeah, I can see that. We're good? You're kidding? Don't worry. I made this date tonight just for laughs. I'm too young to get involved. one of the nicest non-com clubs I've ever seen. Yeah, beats any nightclub around here. Want to dance? All right. I better warn you, I'm not too hot at dancing, so when you've had enough, yell for a breakaway. Breakaway? What's that? While we danced, I explained what a breakaway was, and also about my work. It was easy talking to her, and I was really enjoying myself. But when we got back to our table, something happened. 
It's hard to explain what and how, and, but I'll never forget that moment. I was demonstrating to her how the refueling operation works. Now, where is the receivership located? Oh, here, let me show you. All right. I will use my pack of cigarettes as my ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, this straw will be the boom. Okay. Now, what will we use for the receivership? Well, will, will my compact do? Oh, that's fine. Here. Oh. As she handed it to me, it slipped and fell to the floor. We both bent over, reaching for it. At the same time, I happened to look up and saw her face only inches away. And for an instant, it seemed like eternity, we looked into each other's eyes. For some reason, it seemed as though everything around us disappeared and we were alone. We didn't have to say anything. As I remember, I don't think we spoke more than a few words the rest of the evening, just held hands and looked at each other. When I walked back to my room later that night, I knew this was it. For the first time in my life, I had fallen. I mean, really fallen. I thought Carol and I were the only ones who knew it, but I guess it began to show. And one day, several weeks later, when our crew was called in for a special briefing... What's it all about, Sergeant Allen? Well, I'm only the flight engineer, Riley. You, you'll find out when Captain White gets here. Hiya, Don. What's new? Oh, nothing much. Who are you trying to kid? You haven't been to the bowling league for the last few weeks. Have you dropped out for good, or is it that waff you've been spending all your spare time with, huh? <laughs> Take it easy, Don. You're going to end up with a wife on your hands one morning. Remember, Don, that time when you said you were too young to get married? Yeah, yeah, but... I think I've sort of matured since then. Good morning, men. Morning, morning, sir. Good morning. I'll have some news for you. You might call it a sort of honor. We've been chosen to take part in a series of refueling tests that will take place within a few weeks down at Eglin Air Force Base, the air proving ground. Our mission will be to test the refueling capacity of the F-101A, Voodoo supersonic jet fighter. The Voodoo, sir. Isn't that a new plane? Yes, Sergeant Allen. So far as I know, it'll call for a new approach to the refueling test. Plans will be sent down showing the proposed construction of the refueling unit in the plane, and we'll do some practicing with a mock-up before we engage in the real thing. Uh, we'll probably start practicing in about a week. It's really something, isn't it, Carol? Mm. Imagine, out of the whole Air Force, our ship was chosen for the job. Yes, Don, it, it is something to be proud of. Well, I guess there aren't many crews that have worked together as long as we have. Maybe that was the reason. Maybe. You think a lot of your crewmates don't sit down. Yeah. I guess I do. Now we get along well. Uh, there, uh, there's something else I want to tell you. Uh, I mean, ask you. I've been meaning to do it for a while now, but I, I put it off until... Well, we'll be leaving on this job soon, and I, I want to find out before we go. Yes, Don? Well, you, you know how I feel about you, don't you? Yes, I, I do. Then, well, will you marry me? Marry? Don, I... Well, what's the matter? Well, I, I don't know how to tell you. It's, it's pretty difficult. Oh, 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 I see. You don't love me. Oh, but I do. Very much, Don, really. Well, then, then why the stalling? Well, I... I think we'll have to wait. Wait? Why? Well, they called me down to the orderly room today. I I just found out I'm being reassigned. Oh, no. Where? Where to? Merritt Air Force Base. That's in California. California? Mm. When? Three days from now. Well, let's get married right away. How can we, Don? It would only complicate things. How can they get any more complicated than they are already? Well, maybe we can figure out something. Sure. But what? You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Breakaway. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Are you a veteran, a former serviceman? If so, you should know about your new opportunities under the liberalized reenlistment policy of Uncle Sam's Air Force. You see, right now, the United States Air Force is accepting a wider range of skills with a choice of U.S. and overseas assignments. And listen, a paid 30-day delay in reporting can be granted upon request. Another advantage is that there's a more favorable conversion list in effect for all veterans, especially those with critical skills. 
The Air Force may also be able to guarantee you training in a critical skill. Yes, if you qualify, this guarantee may be made even before you re-enlist. You can get full details on all these new liberal benefits by contacting your nearest Air Force recruiter. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Breakaway. How often does a man ask a girl to marry him only to learn that she's to be parted from him? Maybe it's happened before, but never to me. So there was nothing else I could do but agree with Carol that we wait until we came up with a lasting solution. I can tell you it was a most reluctant decision for both of us. But on the day of her scheduled departure, I came up with what I thought might be the answer. Our crew had a briefing that afternoon. Now, here are the plans and drawings of the F-101A, men. Take a look at them. Oh, that's a sweet-looking job. Looks just like its name. Voodoo. Yeah, but this is different from any other Air Force plane. That's right, Sergeant Bell. Uh, the receiving receptacle is to the rear of the raised cockpit instead of in the front. Well, that'll sure change things when it comes to refueling. Yes, that's to be our job, to help find the best method. As I understand it, the Voodoo is designed to be the most powerful fighter plane in the world. And if we can enable it to be refueled in flight, well, SAC will have another potent air arm to carry out its mission. Now, after you take a good look at these plans, we'll discuss any suggestions you may have. Uh, but you can take a break now. Say, this is turning out to be interesting, huh, Doc? Yeah. What's the matter? You look down the dumps today. Well, Carol's going in the morning. Oh. Hey, that's tough, Don. Sure is. Ah, but she'll get over it. Never. Ah, time is the great healer. <laughs> One thing, though. Be like old times to have you back with a crew like before. Yeah. yeah. Ah, come on, Don. Cheer up. Who knows? Maybe she'll be transferred back again. Transferred? Yeah, that's right. Hey, Ed, you know something? That's something I never thought of? No, sir. Uh, thanks, Ed. Thanks. For what? I'll tell you when it happens. Let me see those drawings. Maybe I can figure out something. Ed had inadvertently given me an idea. And I wondered why I hadn't thought of it myself before, but I guess I had been too upset to think straight. That evening, I said goodbye to Carol, and I didn't feel as bad as I thought I would. Oh, it was a nice evening, Don. Our last one. Don't say that. Not our last one. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. I meant the last one here. Uh, I know. No, but who can tell what'll happen? You might see me sooner than you think. Oh, I wish that with all my heart. How? It's very simple. It's funny we haven't thought of it before. I'll just get a transfer. Hmm, I've thought of that. You have? Mm-hmm. But I didn't want to suggest it. Why not? Well, you've been with your crew a long time. This station and your work mean a lot to you. So do you. I know. But it's something you must decide for yourself. I have already. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. Well, I suppose I'd better get going now. Yeah. No goodbyes, Carol. I don't believe in them. All right, Don. No goodbyes. Remember, I love you. I love you. I love you. The squadron commander will see you now, uh, Sergeant Bell. Thanks, Sergeant. Yes, Sergeant. Uh, sir, I would like to request a transfer to Merritt Air Force Base in California. Transfer? For what reason, Sergeant? Well, sir, the girl I intend to marry... Waff M in first class Carol Jennings has just been reassigned there, and if I'm going to marry her, I'd like to be near her. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand. Yes, yeah, Sergeant, sit down. Thank you, sir. Being a happily married man myself, I'm 100% in favor of the institution, and I'll do what I can for you. Oh, thank you, sir. Then I... But there are some things to be considered. One of the most important being whether or not an airman of your specialty classification is needed at Merritt AFB. It's a sack base. Yes, it is. But there's another thing. You're a key man in the crew that's been assigned to the F-101A project. If you were to go now, the whole schedule would be set back. Oh. Another crew would have to be assigned to the job, and for this job, a crew that is tops in teamwork is necessary, one whose members have worked together a long time. I don't have to tell you that, Sergeant Bell. No, sir. Uh, now, here's what I suggest. Hold off on your transfer request until the job is finished. It shouldn't take more than a few weeks. Okay? Yes, sir. I guess I hadn't thought of it that way. Thank you, sir. 
dear Carol, I have just been to the squadron commander to ask him for a transfer to your base. He didn't turn me down, but he suggested I hold off for a few weeks because of a special project. So I think it looks good. Well, men, after looking over your suggestions you submitted, I think we'll try Sergeant Bells first. The ground crew has the mock-up set up by the tanker already, so let's go. Okay, now you'd better explain it to the crew, Sergeant Bell. Yes, sir, Captain Wayne. I figured the best thing to do was line up the boom with the nose of the receiver as it came into position. That way you can get it centered well. Then as it moves in, the boom operator raises the boom, and after the receiver's canopy has passed safely under the boom, lowers it into the receiving envelope. Well, that's all. Okay, let's try a dry run. And the ground crew will operate the mock-up while you work the boom, Sergeant Bell. Well, as far as I can see, Sergeant Bell's plan seems best. How about it, men? Okay. Our orders will probably come down within a few days, but in the meantime, we'll practice more dry runs. It's all for today. Nice work, Don. Yeah, great idea. Oh, it's good to see you back on the beam. I mean, boom, Don. <laughs> Thanks, but won't be for long, fellas. Why not? I'm getting a transfer. Transfer? Yeah, I'm going to put in for one at the same base my fiancé went to. Oh, no. I, I thought you were over that. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that uh, for our sake. I mean, not yours. You can say that again, sir. I've been in the service long enough to know that crews can't stay together forever. Still, we had a good group. Breakaway. That's what it is, all right. Come on, Riley, let's go up to the base exchange for some coffee. I'll see you, Doc. As they walked away from me, I somehow felt I had broken away from them already. If not in flesh and spirit. And deep down inside of me, I wasn't happy about it. Several days later, I got one of many letters from Carol. And if there was one thing I learned since she left, it was that that old saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder, wasn't just a stale cliche. But I was due for a surprise. Dear Don, I received your letter telling me about your asking for a transfer. Of course, I realize it was your try you meant for the best, but I've been thinking things over since I got here. And I've decided that your transferring out here is not the right solution. Now, please don't get me wrong. Everything is the same between us, and I want it to stay that way. But I think there may be another way more satisfactory. I read it over and over again, but all I could figure it to mean was the worst, that she didn't really love me. I was plenty worried, but I knew I had to put it out of my mind for a while because our upcoming mission would require all my concentration. After it was over, I'd have time to decide what to do about Carol's letter. We took off early the next morning and arrived at Eglin right on schedule. The ship looked better than she did in her photos. And after checking it, we had a conference with the pilot about the procedure to be used in refueling. Sounds very good to me, Captain White. Fine. Now, there's one other thing. We probably won't need it, but in case of a breakaway, we've planned it so that Sergeant Bell will retract the boom before you drop aft. Good. That'll prevent my canopy from striking it. Right. Shall we give it a few dry runs? We ran through some dry runs on the ground and then took off for some wet hookups. After climbing to pre-designated altitudes, the voodoo closed into refueling position. I lined up my boom with its nose, lifted it, and dropped it into the receptacle. Receiver contact made. Tanker contact made. Fuel pressure coming up. Sergeant Allen started the fuel transfer, and everything was going smoothly until... Don, look. The hydraulic pressure's going down. Ed was right, a malfunction. I flipped the fuel cutoff switch and called for... Breakaway. Receiver disconnect. I retracted the boom manually, and the voodoo fell behind as Captain White put our ship into a climb. Thanks to our careful planning and rehearsing, everything went smoothly. Aircraft commander to crew. Well done, men. I got the best crew in the Air Force. Over. Flight engineer to AC. Speaking for the crew, your top's in our book, too, sir. Over. Hey, Don, how about that? You know, too bad you're leaving us. I'm not leaving. What? No, I changed my mind about that transfer. If there's any place I belong, it's here with you guys. Oh, but your girl... You can forget about her, because I'm starting to. Yes, I'd come to the conclusion that Carol was really giving me the brush off. So far as I was concerned, it was going to be quits. Or so I tried to tell myself, with not too much success. Finally, we touched down at our base, and after the debriefing, when I got back to my barracks, 
The orderly told me I had a visitor waiting to see me at the service club. I got into my Class A uniform and went over to the club wondering who it could be. But as soon as I stepped inside, I saw her standing there, smiling. Dad? Carol. What in the world? Well, aren't you glad to see me? Well, well sure, but... Well, here, sit down, Don, and I'll tell you all about it. Yeah, sure. I'm here on leave, a sort of special one. Oh? Well, uh, why'd you come back here? There's something you have to do? Mm-hmm. Well, that's nice. Don, why are you acting like this? Well, how else should I act? I got your letter and oh, I... Oh, so that's it. Oh, I was hoping you wouldn't take it like that. What other way could I take it? Oh, Don, listen to me. I've come back here for a very special reason. My wedding. Wedding? Yes, to you. If you'll still have me. Have you? Mm. Oh, honey, how can you ask? Well, what are we going to do oh, about don't worry that? about that. We won't be separated. What do you mean? That's my surprise. I didn't want to write it to you. I wanted to tell it to you. I guess that's why my letter sounded evasive. Well, well tell me, what surprise? Well, give me a chance, will you? When I got to my base, I did some thinking, the same as you did. But I also did some asking. Did you ever hear of Air Force Manual 3511? No. Well, under its provisions, Air Force husbands and wives may be assigned to the same station. Carol, are you sure of that? Absolutely. I read it myself. And since I know you don't want to leave here, I'll ask for a reassignment back to this base. But I won't be able to ask for it until... Until... Carol, sweetheart. <laughs> hey, look out that door there. You see? Mm -hmm. Right across the street is the chaplain's office. You ready to go? <laughs> oh, Don. Oh, I've been ready a long time. Such a long time. business world, when you make an investment, you want it to pay off, right? Well, men, how about those years you invested in the service, learning skills, gaining experience valuable to yourself and your country? You can make those years pay off in big dividends today by becoming a member of the United States Air Force. Your Air Force recruiter has a folder full of details, so write or visit him right away. Ask for the prior service man's folder, and you'll know why today and tomorrow you're better off in the United States Air Force. has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>